What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh-huh. Rebel Radio is going down. What did you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. What's up, Rebels? Welcome back to Rebel Radio, the weekly show where I talk to the Rebels that are shaping youth culture. We find out how they do it, why they do it, and what you can do to get a little piece of the pie for yourself. We're also the only show to bring you new music every week from our friends over at EDM.com. I'm your host, Josh Levine. My guest this week is the funny, talented, uh, something else in there, Jade Catapreta. She's a comedian, actress, uh, Brazilian-American, and she's got some great stories about how um, she's building her, her brand and her business in both Brazil and the U.S. And how the markets are different and how she's been able to adapt her style for different audiences. She also has some great stories about um, just having, having her crew that has her back and she has theirs and, and the importance of that, which I think is true for probably all of us. I hope you'll join us for this one right after the EDM.com track of the week. Yo, that was Pulzanti with Good People, the EDM.com track of the week. If you like that one, get over to EDM.com, check out more new music. And let's get into the interview with Jade Catapreta. So tell me a little bit about the show, like what you guys do. I, I, I did like a little minimal, minimal stalking. Cool. Uh, That's how we like it. Yeah. No, the show's just about people that are doing cool things for a living oh sweet and it's mostly music art yeah a little bit of comedy yeah um musical comedy it can be or musical art yeah have you i don't even know what that would be well yesterday i went to see have you guys seen the robot arm thing downtown no fucking incredible go see it really yeah it's this installation it's these huge robot arms and they do this like light show it was worth it yeah I, we didn't say for the Q&A, but um, I'll show you a little bit of it. It's so good. It's like, it's kind of scary. It's like very, uh, but it's this huge. Oh, that's weird. Sorry, I'm like scooting out of this. That's crazy. It's crazy. And there's two and they like kind of communicate. Yeah. But and then the lights are like really bright and then they do this whole laser show around sure. it. It's just beautiful. Oh, that's interesting. Never heard. Yeah, Robot see, that's arms. the thing. I feel like they don't get... People live within their own kind of niche, and then we never really explore. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing about L.A. How long have you been here? Almost 13 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, there's this thing of, like, there's all kind of shit going on in different pockets that yeah. if you're not, if that's not your scene or you're not in that part of the city, yeah. you don't even know about it. Yeah, that's why. Well, I don't want to date any comic ever again. Yeah. That's, like, my number one. So now when I date people, that's the... The way that I kind of get introduced. Like you learn about a new thing. Yeah, yeah. Why will you not date comics? I dated a comic for almost eight years. Yeah. And the end. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No, I, you know, it's just, I think there's just one headshot per relationship. I think that should be the rule. Is that right? Yeah. Just got to be too much. It's just too much all the time. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's nice to have some, a normie. Uh Uh-huh. A normie, you know. Sure. Whoever's going to date me is not going to be normal, but. Really? Yeah. What kind of guys do you like? Um, I don't really have a type. I'm pan. So I feel like I really like people. And I like people that are like, uh, I like calmer energies than mine, which is not hard to find. <laughs> yeah, you seem pretty upbeat. I'm um, bah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, where is that from? Uh, my my intense, uh-huh. my intensity. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think I've always been like kind of a precautious kind of like person just like running around. Okay. I'm a duck. Oh. You know, on top, I'm like smooth riding, and then oh, underneath, the... my paws are just like. Yeah. <laughs> I like but that. I think that's, that's why I'm a big analogy. pothead. Really? Yeah, because I just need breaks from my own fucking mind all mm. the time. I can't smoke weed. Why? Because it, it makes me feel shitty. Oh, it does? Yeah. Not good, yeah. Every time. Really? Every time? Yeah. Food, edible, everything. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't, I, I stopped trying. Yeah. So long. you just do cocaine now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. funny, I heard, I was, lis- I was listening to you on a few different podcasts. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I never listened to them, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, of course. Because yeah. why would you? Um, People listen. And they're like, they? oh, I said some funny shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. That's weird. Um, but, uh, but it's funny, like, that it, it just struck me you were saying something about smoking weed. And I just thought, like, it's so funny that, you know, now weed's everywhere, right? It's legal and it's, you know, and even before it was legal, it was still, like, but no one, would, no one sits around on podcasts talking about using cocaine or heroin or, like, any other drug. Yeah. But, like, you know, drinking and weed. Well, like, if I think weed should, or marijuana, like, should be ruled out of the whole, like, drug Thing because it's medicinal to the point now where people are you know self-medicating in a way that's really healthy and even mushrooms like i'm really a big mushroom person sure big advocate yeah for people taking mushrooms and just kind of like i'm not talking about like going crazy and like hallucinating and like right. being naked in the woods and stuff which do it as well but i think just really like knowing yourself and taking a little bit instead of taking these drugs that are like cut with soap and chemicals and well sure you know yeah. like cocaine is disgusting you know yeah I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, Very I'm just saying like, answer. well, I think like all of these things have benefits yeah. and side effects. Of course. Right. And, you know, cocaine was used medicinally at certain points. You yeah. know, you can still get the coca leaves in, in Peru if you're, you know, marching up the mountain, whatever. Right. Like, like, let's hike up so we can just fucking <laughs> spray so down. Can, exactly. Chewing on leaves. And so I'm not I, like, I don't really have a strong stance. Yeah. I'm just I just find it interesting the 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 lines that we draw about what we'll talk about and what we won't. Yeah. It's and yeah, it's funny cuz cocaine's like sort of this taboo like Yeah, oh, cocaine. you wouldn't be like, "Oh, we were out last night doing, doing cocaine." Yeah, yeah it's kind of shameful. Yeah. You're like in a bathroom, it's disgusting. <laughs> For sure. You know, it's like just in a bathroom snorting some soap. Um <laughs> Yeah, it, and you know, there's a lot of things happening too with cocaine like, you know, that's scary. I mean, I think about all the times I've been like Yeah buying drugs from children in Mexico, you know? So. Yeah, those kids are the best. <laughs> That's why they sell you gum too, because you're all coked out and you're like, I need gum. I went, we were in Cabo and like, and yeah, it was like midnight and these yeah. five-year-olds are selling us gum. And I was just like, can you go home and go to bed? That's like, why where, you're Why gum? is there not somebody getting you to sleep? Their parents are probably putting them out of the street and then, well, No, of course yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah. Which is the saddest part. Yeah. And then Australia, but this then, morning, like, a bunch five of, of them died. ganged up on my friend. And start, like, they start kicking him in the ass. They're like, come on, they, man, buy some chicles from us. Come on. And then they just started, like, taunting him. And he's, like, a grown-ass man, like, being beaten up by five-year-olds. It was amazing. The kids in Brazil are pretty scary, too. Are they? Oh, yeah. I'm scared of teenagers. The well, end. teenagers are scary, yeah. period. Yeah. They're just horrible people. Yeah. And I was, no, I was saying in Australia, too, that horrible thing happened this morning. Total know. shootout. Oh, yeah, like, I think, like, 50 people. Oh, let's bring it way down and just talk about I, You know, I, I turn on the radio for one minute hoping to listen to some music and then, like, yeah. right away. Like, yeah. Let's go back to cocaine. Yeah, this podcast is all about mass shootings. Mass shootings. Just people terrible, dying. Terrible people. Memorials. Yeah. Let's bring it back. That's awesome. No, sorry to bring it down. Things are good. Hey, let's talk about you. Oh, sick. My favorite. <laughs> Um, how'd you get started doing comedy? I moved to LA wanting to be an actor. I went to Emerson, really okay. like very musical theater background, like wanted to be on Broadway, still do. Um, and then I got a job at National Lampoon. Oh, cool. With, remember when they were like a network before they got raided? No. Um, and it, it was like a, they had a college humor show online when YouTube was just starting and it was me and Kato Kalin. I don't mean nice. to name drop so early in the interview, but, um, uh, the guy who wrote on that show, Sandy Danto, is a comic. Uh-huh. And one of my best friends, he was like, you should really try stand-up. You have kind of that rhythm. Yeah. And at the time, I hadn't done it, but had seen a lot of it. Cause Emerson, like Eliza Schlesinger, Bill Burr, all these people had gone there. Uh-huh. At the point, at that point, I was like, I'd rather kill a baby, but let's do it. And then uh, went to the comedy store, and it was just a bunch of homeless dudes doing it at what awesome. felt like. Yeah, so I was like, I can do this. I have so a like, home. Open mic. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. and then I got a job working, bartending at the comedy store right away. Yeah. And just kind of learned everything there, met everyone there. Bobby Lee was the first guy to take me on the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and then shortly after, I met Kevin Nealon there, who I've been on the road with. I'm with him this weekend. Nice. On the road. And what Bill was Bird. your first night on stage like? 
incredible. Yeah. That's always what it's like for stand-ups. The first night, yeah, yeah. there's That's so much heard. adrenaline, right. and then you chase that stand-up dragon for the rest of your career, yeah. that one night. Yeah. Mine was a bringer show in the belly room, uh -huh. and it was this woman called Crazy Cindy. Okay. And the mic just always smelled because she was just like intense. And uh, <laughs> it was a bringer show, you know, the bringer yeah, yeah. shows. And in Meaning belly, you got to bring people. You got to bring people yeah, to yeah. get up. So it's it's miserable because there's like 17 people on the lineup, and mm -hmm. but that's kind of how you start, you know, if you can't just do open mics. Yeah. Um, and then I just I fell in love pretty quickly. Yeah. And I wouldn't say but fall in love, actually. But you've been on stage. You, so you were a dancer. I was a up, dancer, right? and I did musical theater and acting. So, okay. so you were comfortable on stage already. You know, I was comfortable on stage, but I wasn't comfortable as myself. Yeah, I mean, it's I a different... I feel like that just started, like, last year. Sure. That's About a 10 thing. years in. Wow. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, well, was there a moment when you're like, oh, I got this? You know, the moment was when I went back to Brazil and I started doing it in Portuguese. Yeah. And I was eating such hard shit. Uh -huh. And then I came back here and I was like, oh, I have the full language here. Like, I have a full vocabulary to work yeah. with. So I think that's when it really turned for me, which is crazy. It took me so long. Did Some people are really comfortable from the start. Sure. Really know themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's hard having always been in character. Yeah. To c kind of make that transition. I think it's, you know, people think it's like, oh, acting and comedy. It's like one in one, but it's really such a different thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think it is difficult. It has been difficult for me sometimes when I get frustrated about like, why am I not further along? You know, like in that kind of sense. Uh -huh. I think it's because I do stretch myself a bit thin. Like uh -huh. most of my comic friends aren't auditioning all day, every day, learning lines, memory, you know, sleeping in early, waking up right. early. Yeah. Um, most of them wake up at one, write some jokes, smoke some weed and then do sets, you know. Uh -huh. Hey, you I, should try that. Acting. I, I have the acting bug, man. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I'm an, like, I'm an auditioning pony. That's what I do. Okay. What, um, what, oh, you were talking about Brazil earlier yeah. and, and how, um, comedy scenes exploding there. Yeah. Is the, is the humor different? Oh, yeah. yeah. They're in a totally different moment because sort of their humor started as very, like, novella character based, like, mm -hmm. but I do that, like, kind of a thing, you know, or, like, really, and they have these, uh, really distinct parts of Brazil. So there's right. all these like redneck Brazilians and like yeah. the North is like, you know? Yeah. And so it's really kind of that, like there's a Northern girl and like the Southern girl and there's not. Where's your family from? My family's from Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. My mom is from Guararapes, which is a small town outside of Sao Paulo, but mostly like city people. Mm -hmm. um, and what was hard for me is I did this kind of like nervous laugh okay. and it comes off in America. It's like this funny kind of neurotic character. And then in Brazil, it comes off like, why is she laughing at her own jokes? I don't like that. So I kind of had to rediscover my rhythm there. Their stand-up is mostly colorful language rather mm. than joke-based. Okay. There's not a lot of like joke tellers there, which they're going to be mad at me for saying that. But, um, but it's mostly like telling stories in a really funny way. It's still sort yeah. of in this young version of itself. Uh. Very object, like observational-based like very Jerry Seinfeld style. So like, like what, so you what go into you... the bathroom and it's like, you go to dry your hands, but the towel's already been used. Like, uh -huh. kind of a thing. That is a funny joke. I'm crushing it. Um, but, yeah, it's different. It's, it definitely is. And there's a few guys kind of doing it, you know, alternative comedy. They're including music and yeah. doing, it's starting. You can feel it. Interesting. The first time I went, I met everyone. Mm -hmm. And... This one guy had a small space and he was like, I'm going to make this a club. And then by the third time I had gone that year, it was already a running club, two shows each, each floor, like functioning already. So things are happening really quickly there. Interesting. And there's not a lot of women. So yeah. I went to fill that hole. Yeah. Get it? Oh, you get it. <laughs> yeah, you are good with the we words. We have holes, yeah. Right. Um, that's funny. Well, have you ever tried stand up? No, I'm too scared. Would you? You're scared? Yeah. Could you not do it? If somebody bet you, would you do it? I don't know what I don't know what the, I would say. Like I, I do some public speaking and I yeah. talk on this show, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to talk in front of people. Yeah. But I have no idea what I would say. What I always tell it people. It is a secret, like desire. I mean, I'm. Everybody has that it's like that little secret, itch. Yeah, that secret. itch, you yeah. know. But I, uh, I always tell people when you f first want to write three minutes, each minute is one thing. Uh huh. Think about things that you say every day in your everyday life that you already know and you repeat. Yeah. You know, people have like maybe a funny story about their name or where they're from. Right. And it always kind of gets a laugh. 
that's the first thing you work on. And okay. then you kind of go off of that. Yeah, like I was yeah. a waiter and that's how I first kind of started working jokes. Mm. You know, I'd be like, I guess you guys didn't like it <laughs> when the plates would be empty, right. you know, like uh, it's yeah. really stupid. My wife does that every time she orders. Yeah. She finishes her food and she's like, I didn't like this. Like exactly. that's her, her that's, favorite. It gets joke her to laugh, to yeah. I'm sure. And she knows how to tell it, you know. Right. So it, it's a good way to kind of get people to get started. Yeah. With writing. All right, let's get on that, James. <laughs> James, start it up. I did a I did a groundlings. Yeah, same. But I, I also don't like improv. I mean Improv's really difficult. That makes me really nervous. I respect the hell out of yeah. it. Yeah. But it's not like I've gone to improv shows. I'm like, yeah. it's, it's sort of fun, but it's not I, I think it's, it's when thing. it's good, it's brilliant. And when it's bad, it's fucking awful. There's no in between. Mm. And that's the problem. Yeah. Never know what you're going to get. I just don't know if I love watching skits. But you're oh, like really? a theater person. and Yeah, I really that, like, like, I really like in the like moment. I love watching stand-up. Yeah. I go watch stand-up every day. Yeah, I fucking hate stand-up. Really? Can't watch it. There's very few people that I can really sit through their sets. I'm, I'm joking, but there is yeah. like kind of some truth to it. Like I wouldn't, I'd watch people's specials, but I get nervous that I'll see something that's really similar to a setup I've been thinking about, or I don't know. I just feel like, and then later I'll think of it. I'm like, did I already see that? Or so I, I tend to not really watch stand up that much. Actually, I watch a lot of old stand up. Yeah. Maybe because I'm old. Yeah. But like I've been watching lately the, um, the Dean Martin roasts. Oh, wow. So he does like Frank Sinatra and Lucille Ball, like all these people, they, they do these amazing roasts. That's cool. I should look back on some roasts. Oh, so good. So good. And like, especially because back then, now there's just so many famous people. Or like when you watch the Comedy Central roast, there's always some new comic that no one's heard of. Like this is the whole dais is like super famous. Yeah, like Dick Van Dyke and yeah. all these people. Yeah. Yeah, and Marlon Brando. I kind of like, missed that thing where it was like, to be a celebrity, you had to like really work and have talent, and now it's right. like you can just get fucked on video, and people know it. Yeah. It's sort of disheartening in a sense, in a way. I mean, it's it's just the you know the world is changing. Yeah. Everything about the world is changing. Yeah, I guess I don't like change. I don't fame. want it. No one likes change. Change no sucks. Change sucks. Yeah. I want it all to be the same. I, you know what it is? We all want control, even if we said we don't. Maybe that's what it is. I was watching the, the uh, so I'm, I'm not watching the Michael Jackson thing. I watched it. Did you? Yeah. I don't know. Any If a wife is murdered or there's a pedophile, I'm in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, what did she do to deserve it? And I'm like, and how sick is he? Um, I, I've gotten into, like, yelling fights with friends about this Michael Jackson documentary. So I'm not going to watch it. Why? Because I don't care. I mean, I care. I don't care about the details. I don't want... I sort of try to protect my brain. Yeah. Right? And, like, so there's certain things that are just too shitty for it's me. It's really to shitty. Kind of, it's like junk food, right? Like, I just won't put it inside It's interesting. To, yeah, I like I like seeing... Have you seen Taken from Plain Sight? No. It's another, like, pedo. Oh, yeah. I, I um, can't watch that either. It's basically... What I'm interested in is, like, the psychology of the manipulation that they have to go through oh, yeah, in order to, like... That, sure. You know, I don't want to... I, I, I could have done without the, like sexual details it's right. very graphic and yeah. very sad um but i don't know i it was interesting to see like he befriended all the fa the family right. and he really used his fame and he really you know he really kind of brainwashed these kids for like many many years yeah yeah so yeah. i would say I, my wife's into it yeah and she was watching the oprah like the interview, interview the post with the mm -hmm. boys and or the the guys and um they'll saw, always be stuck as boys unfortunately Fair enough. Um, but I saw a couple minutes of that, and, and the, the thing that stuck with me was Oprah saying, um, you know, they were talking about just how these guys were so enamored with Michael. And, you know, and she said, um, you know, it's hard for us to relate to that because there is no such thing as a star. No star now is as big as he was at that time. Mm -hmm. And right. nor will they maybe ever no, be. No, probably never. Yeah. And as like that's that's the part that interested me was like yeah. yeah, I mean those those mega stars who just like mean everything to the world, that's a thing of the past. Yeah, even in stand up I think about this there's not really like, you know, the George Carlin or the right. Eddie Murphy because it's also so niche now. Yeah. You know, there's a guy who like 
plays keyboard and sings about sports. Right. You know, sure. like there's, it's so yeah, everything specific. Is niche. Right. Yeah, everything is so niche. Yeah. You it know, almost Steve dilutes. Steve Martin was the most successful comic I love ever. Steve Martin. Live. Yeah. Right? So in terms of like ticket sales. Yeah. He he's number one. Oh, I didn't of know all that. time and like and probably no one's ever going to beat him for that reason. Maybe yeah. a Chinese dude. Right, because it helps us all the yeah maybe but like, Brazil. I mean, the population yeah, Brazil is sure. pretty large. Yeah, but but you know, I mean, no yeah. one certainly in America that's never going to happen again because everything is much more or fractured. I fucking blow Might be up you. and I blow the house down. What people are like, we got to get some vagina jokes in this morning. Um, no, I, yeah, I, it's interesting too because I don't think people need that sort of like intensity to even feel like they've made it. You know. No. Yeah. Maybe not. I don't even need the fame part of it doesn't attract me at all. Like I want to leave my house, no makeup on, <laughs> smoking a joint, like in mesh shorts. But um, I do, I would like to not be like, what's next? What's next? What's next? I'd like that feeling to sort of go away. And I think that's an inner feeling. So, so what drives you then? What drives me? Hmm. What drives me? I mean, besides like the, the, material part of it like paying rent paying rent and like yeah. wanting to own a house and stuff sure. um no not that I, you know because there are easier ways to pay i want to make somebody feel the way i felt when i was young and i would see people that i looked up to who would you see that, that i mean sarah silverman like blew my mind i remember or maria bamford like i remember yeah. seeing maria bamford i remember like i was really really into jack black too when mm -hmm. i was young well tenacious d mm -hmm. Like just and like that that feeling of just like oh it's so good like I just want to make somebody feel that yeah. feeling and then also inspire people to do it I mean I think that's really cool yeah and especially like an immigrant person who doesn't speak the language or doesn't feel like they necessarily feel it fit in I'm really into I like making people feel included mm. I like making people feel like they're an old friend so I think that's just why I like in stand comedy or in, or in, in life. In life. But I think that translates to yeah, sure. when I do comedy. I think I, because I think I'm dirty, but then people are like, oh, that's cool. It's just Jade. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing it for shock value. I'm doing it because it's like we're friends and I'm telling you like a sex story. Right. All my friends know they hang up on me when it gets too graphic. They're like, right. well, I'm done. Is there, um, so I, you know, I, I noticed that uh, listening to you on the podcast is that, you know, you're, you're incredibly open. Mm -hmm. Um, and graphic and uh is are there things you won't talk about yeah yeah i have some yeah there's some family things i won't talk about so like other people's business i won't like talk about other thing. people's business probably right. <laughs> i don't we're not going to hold you to it you can just make shit up and then... no 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 i um yeah no i try not to like you know of course expose like friend like secrets out yeah out people and, yeah yeah <laughs> Um, I'll let them come up. And right. also some stuff with my, my parents just recently are going through a separation, getting Got divorced. It. And so that's a little sensitive. And I sure. want to, you know, protect them. But yeah. whatever feels like I can, I will yeah. talk about it. Is there a bit. downside to that? Other than your friends hanging up on you? Oh, like just relationships? Um, just men being like scared to date me? No. No? No, I think, you know, you either like it or you don't. Yeah. And I think I've gotten to the point where um, if you don't like it, I'm like, get the fuck out of my life. Does it feel, when you're up there, does it feel like you're being vulnerable, like you're exposing yourself? No, it just feels good. Yeah. Yeah. There's I never there's never that thought of like, oh, oh, oh here we go, I'm about to say something crazy. Right. It's just like I'm just, I think I'm maybe missing some kind of filter. And has that always been that way? Or did yeah. you like start out doing like certain type of jokes and then I was much dirtier in the beginning. Really? I think it was What's just... What do you mean? Just like, it was just like, it was just recklessly yeah. disgusting, you know, for no reason. And I yeah. think it was too aggressive and people were like, what? I, I, I almost like, I feel like you have to kind of earn that in a sense. Now mm. that I've been doing it long enough, I feel like it has to be structurally a good written joke in yeah. order for it to be yeah, sure. dirty like that. Yeah. And I do hear when co like some female comics are extra dirty. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, like it's kind of a turn off for me. So. Are you, um. I feel like I just heard you like swallow so ASMR style. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's mm. my thing. Uh, I'm trying to put you to sleep. Yeah, oh, just felt a little tingle in the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you, is it, I mean, I'm sure it's different doing kind of dirty 
comedy as a woman. As opposed to being a man? Well, I wouldn't ask you what it's like for a man, because you're not one. Well, but, I don't know. But, but like, I, do I also like, hate that. Like, what's it like to be a woman doing this? No, like, I'm not. But I wonder. I'm not going to ask you that. But you I wonder. Just did. No, I'm wondering. Do do you get? Uh, do people react? Like, there is one thing I notice that I talk about, and people are like, "That's in your head." But if I'm dressed up, or if I'm wearing like tight clothing, I do feel the difference. Yeah. Of like, I can feel girls being like, "Why are you laughing at her?" Uh, or like, I can feel a little bit of like a. Sure. Why are you doing stand-up dressed like? I can feel it. Like, yeah. I, it's not something I can put into words, but there is a feeling, like me versus a funny-looking dude going on stage. It takes me like maybe a extra three minutes to get him on my side, mm. versus a guy comes out and is like, oh, oh, you know, and they're like, whoa, you're fat, you right. know. It um, does help to be fat. Huh, it does help At to least be. For a man. It does help to be a little funny looking. Yeah. It does and I am funny looking in a way. So. What does that mean? Maybe it's not weight, but I have my things. Okay. You know. Good for you. Thanks. Um. So you you mentioned Kevin Nealon. And I forget who else you said, but uh, Bobby Lee Bobby is my Lee, other guy right. that I've been opening for for a long time. Yeah. So is that? Do you have like a crew? Yeah. Yeah. It's really important in stand up. I tell young comics all the time when you start stand up, you gotta have this group of open micers that you're hitting up open mics with every night, every night. Yeah. And you kind of help each other, and it's there's like sort of a you know underlying competitive nature, but there's also support, and mm. it's really cool now being, you know, about eleven years in, seeing all the people like my class. Yeah. And I started with, it was Tony Hinchcliffe, Matt Edgar, Benji Aflalo, Esther Pravitsky, Justine Marino. They're all, they all kind of found, you know, we all kind of find our voice. It's a cool thing. And so how do you guys help each other? Well, I mean, whenever there's projects, obviously, you know, whatever. We have podcasts, yeah. shows. Um, I think we're all kind of always kind of looking out for each other in that, in that sense. Well, I am. I really, really, really like helping friends. Mm -hmm. I like connecting people. I'm sort of like a job matchmaker. That's cool. I like doing that. Yeah. I feel like if you build your community really strong around you, it ultimately helps you. I'm really, really against that competitive nature mentality. I think it's really, it's what fucks everything up. Yeah. So um, in that sense, and also like to have each other to kind of um, complain about everything. Sure. You know, and especially, like I said, not to bring it down, but like the Brody, you know, Brody yeah. passing is really, really you got to see kind of this community that we've built mm -hmm. and we never really take advantage of it in sort of like a friend sense. Mm -hmm. We kind of take it for granted. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see kind of everybody coming together and we kind of all wish like, oh, we wish we did this for him before right. he passed away. Yeah. Um, so I think we're all going to be a little more aware of like being there for each other. Yeah, yeah that, that, that matters. Yeah. But we're all sort of just like, you know, little individual rats. We're just little r night rat people. So it's hard okay. to stay together. I, you know, like if I'm on the road and I see a comic that I know, it's like seeing family. Right. But sometimes I don't even know anything about them besides mm -hmm. just seeing them like at clubs. And so it's bizarre in that I sense. I have family too. that I don't know anything about. Right. I see them at, you know, Thanksgiving or yeah. whatever. It's like, you're like, how's your Hi. that person you're with? What's Who are you again? <laughs> yeah. How are we related? Do you have a lot of siblings? No, I have none. None? No. Only child? Yeah. Where are you from? San Francisco. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. What about um? Do you have so you have cousins though? Yeah, I have cousins, who I'm like semi close with, and then, um, and then there's all the like other second, third, just the randoms. The randoms. And you know. Yeah. I don't really know. I just recently connected with my family in Brazil after, you know, like 20 years. But yeah. I have 10 cousins, so. Oh, yeah. I'm one out of 10. I'm the oldest. And so it was nice to, like, rebridge that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Cousins seem like fun. It's like uh, there's a familiarity, but yet you never live together and you're not, like, in each other's yeah. shit. Like but you kind of can siblings. complain about your parents, you know, right. in a way, because they have the same sort yeah. of, like, fucked up things that yeah, happened yeah, yeah, from yeah. your grandparents. Yeah. It was so nice to like see my cousins fight with their aunt and I was like <laughs> I'm not alone. That's awesome. I just threw a party. I had a birthday. I just turned twenty five. And birthday. um thank you. Thirty five, I'm thirty five. Um but I had a friend sorry, this is kind of a diluted sort. I have a really good friend who I hadn't seen in months 
And that day before my party, I was kind of running errands. Yeah. And he's just walking down the street. And I kidnapped him. I was like, you're running errands with me. I miss you. And tonight I have a party and you're coming. Kind of a, like, homebody. <clears throat> and then some friends came with some randos. And I was like, ah, oh, everybody's welcome, you know, and I'm talking. And he goes, hey, do you, do you happen to know Ben? And I'm like, that's the friend I ran mm. into. I go, yeah, yeah, I know him. He's coming tonight. And he's like, that's my cousin. I haven't seen him in 20 years. And our grandma just passed away. So then I, I'm like, Ben's here. And then I bring them together and, yeah. like, had just met for the first time after 20 years. And then for hours they talked. And now they've sort of developed a relationship. It's that's fucking funny. crazy. They've been in the same city for yeah, years. Yeah. Sometimes all it takes is one person being like, let's right. go. Yeah. Um, you are the matchmaker. I like putting people together. Yeah. Especially if it's like, oh, if people fuck, ultimately, you're like, <laughs> I did that. You know? Yeah. I'm kind of the same way. I like that. I like people fucking. Yeah. What's the Yiddish word? Yenta? Is that what that is? Yeah. I don't know. No? I, I mean, I said any word and you would be like, uh huh. No, because that word, I mean, I, I, so I don't speak Yiddish. Yeah. But I know like, four things because yeah. of my grandmother but like I so, so I'm more that. Jewish than you and I'm not even Jewish. probably yeah well you're a comic so that's like I'm Jewy I know like I am aware Jewish. of yeah um but uh I think Yenta is more negative really <laughs> it's like uh maybe it didn't maybe it's not intended that maybe way. I'm not thinking of the right word do I, I do think this Yenta is like a busy body Ah, it's like all up in I thought it was like and... I thought it was like a motherly type of lady who's like everybody gets together. <laughs> Maybe it is. How do you even know. spell Yenta? Y e n t a. Y. This is good radio. Yeah, guys, we, we check this out. out. There's video. Out there's video. Oh yeah, that's true. I have to. It's driving me. It will drive me nuts. That's all right. Okay, let's see. Yenta. Into it represents intuition, enlightenment, dreams, incoherence, exit, charisma, and a timid persona. That that's not right. No, that's totally fucking wrong. internet ruined it, everything. Goddamn Wikipedia. The Remember when it. you had to like look something up, or if you met somebody at, to go to the movies and they didn't show up, you oh call their God, house and then they're fucked. not there, they're dead. Yeah. They're just you're like, well, <laughs> meeting people. Rudy was cool, worst, but yeah. For sure, you're like looking for parking and L.A. Like no one's. Yeah, that was terrible. Did you, so you grew up in, when, how long have you been in I LA? I came for college. Oh, where did you go to school? You UCLA. UCLA. <clears throat> so I've been here 30 years. Wow. And where do you live now? What area? Rita Del Rey. What's your address? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> um, I'm dating a guy in Mar Vista and I have to what? tell you, wow, that is commitment. And where do you live? I live in Echo Park. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's long distance relationship. It basically is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, what happens is like, we'll have a day or two days off and we kind of just hibernate in whatever right. area. Yeah. Um, but it's nice. That's far. I really like my. Well, it's Sorry, basically I mean, Venice. No, I know where it is. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's not too bad. It's Unless not far it's, for me. It's far for you. It's a far drive if I hit. I get invited to some Echo Park, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, can I commit like, to this? How much money am I going to make going to this thing? But, right. Yeah. I know. I think we become a little bit lazy. I've like gotten a little better just being like, look, you're going to be in the car anyway. Just listen to an audible and yeah, and then tell everybody you read it. You know. Right, or just hold your phone. <laughs> just hold your phone constantly. Just get every ticket you can get before they take your license. Exactly. So annoying when you're like, I wasn't doing the thing I always do, and you caught me in the one moment. Fuckers. Yeah, I've never, I never do this. I never do this until a second ago, and then you for, didn't. For sure. If I, like the, for me making it, yeah. driver. That's the ultimate. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, for Getting sure. a driver is, yeah. would be. Same here. Just taking tiny naps in the back, learning yeah, lines. Absolutely. Sometimes I think about not having a car. Yeah, I have friends that have done that. We had a woman that used to work with us. Yeah. She gave up her car and just Ubered everywhere. Yeah, it almost makes sense financially. It's almost yeah. a little bit cheaper to have Uber. Yeah. But I don't know. There's that sense of like independence that you sort of lose. You'll get over it. You get over it? Yeah. Like in New York, I'm always like, where's my car? <laughs> oh, it's in LA. <laughs> it's fine. It's in the garage. Totally. Yeah. After living here for so many, like I lived in Hollywood. Yeah. I had a bumper. I like one of those bumper things in the back. You What's that? This? It's like a little rubber thing that you keep in the back of the car just in case people like bump you. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I didn't. No? I don't, I don't, I don't know that. You've always had garages? Fucking only child. <laughs> Spoiled piece of shit. We grew up in San Francisco. There's no garages. I had a car in high school and like yeah. my windows used to get broken like once a month. I love horrible. San Francisco. 
Yeah, love drag. Right. I love a drag bingo breakfast. Whoa, I don't know what that is. Really? It's no. really big in San Francisco. They do these like br drag brunches. I'm not into drag. Let's go. <laughs> I, it feels to me, I mean, I've been to drag shows. I'm so into drag. I feel like it's like um, 1972 and like everyone's titillated by like someone dressed up. Like the whole, oh, those, it's so beyond to me those that jokes feel so like antiquated. It's not even the jokes anymore. It's this whole art form of like the fashion and mm. like the persona yeah, and that's, that's like how, me. like the shape of their body. Like it's so, I think it's <coughs> such a incredible art form. I really okay. do. I'm like intensely into RuPaul's Drag Race. Like okay. I'm an avid watcher. <laughs> sure. It's become such a phenomenon too, like a cultural phenomenon, the show. It's so kitschy and weird and mm. I really dig it. I okay, mean, and their dicks you... are just tucked the whole time, so I just feel like... That's awesome. Cool, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. So, yes, I'm sorry you were going to ask me. <laughs> um, so, you, so I've heard, like I said, I heard you on a bunch of podcasts. You, oh, yes. You do a lot of those. Yeah. Um, so. I just like making, like, zero money for yeah. exposing my whole truth. That's cool. Um, I think what I learned is that I, I was I was struck with like what a different world we we live in. Like, uh, I don't know, like like you and everyone you were talking to on these shows, and I forget which ones they are, so I apologize to the no. talented people hosting those shows. Not at all. But like super open, to talk about everything. Like kind of, there's like nothing's off limits. Um, and I feel like maybe it's just me or my generation or like my yeah. just my friends like we're very protective over everything why is that why do you feel that way why uh, like why are you protective of the information like what do you think would happen if somebody heard nothing i just think there's things that it's you just, just private yeah i don't the, yeah it's not like a conscious thing yeah and I'm, i i didn't mean to make that really about me i just like it no, just it's interesting. it just struck me like how you know how much conversation there was about like sex and relationships and you know uh uh i don't know just stuff that like i think i i i'm guessing it's sort of generational but maybe not maybe it's just well, we're not that far in age we're not uh, that different like, in age what that's 12 years how old are you 47 i'm 35 yeah, that's 12 years. I feel like I never hey, I'm really, good at math. yeah, you are. I never, I never really think, I never really make a conscious choice of like, <coughs> is this really a private? And I'm saying it out loud. Right. I just, yeah, maybe I just, yeah, I mean, I think I am definitely more open than most people. I almost get offended when people don't tell me things. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I just think I'm co comfortable with it. Also, I, I remember for such a long time, it was like, oh my God, what if somebody found a picture of, like me naked yeah. or like what if I was like naked and, or somebody like found a journal entry or like and then I sort of let that go and I'm like then they would see that and that's it then you'd be famous then I'd be fucking famous <laughs> I leave I just leave a naked photo of myself you're like what the is right. this um I think I had Tweet such a out. fear of like being exposed yeah that sort of I went the extreme opposite direction of like you can't you had a hurt. fear of being exposed. I did. I had yeah. like a big fear when I first started. I was, as an actor, I was very private and it was difficult to sort of have this voice. Yeah. And then I think when I went to Brazil and sort of, one, reconnected with my culture and who like I really, because for a long time I would say Brazilian and people would go like, but, but not. Right. right? And I'm like, no, but really it's such a big part of, because Brazilian people are very open and right. getting to kind of see these people that are like hugging me, you know, just mm -hmm. meeting me and hugging me, coming to my home. Like, you know, it's very, they're more of an open people Yeah. than I, it sort of allowed me to be this person who I really always felt like I wanted to be, mm. who was someone who was just really open. Um, and I think, I don't know, I, I think it puts people at ease or it makes people really uncomfortable. There's nothing in the middle. Cool. Nothing How do you feel? <laughs> Is your... How I'm tight is your bubble right now? I'm just tight uh, or loose? I don't think I'm uncomfortable. Cool. Just regular? That's regular. Good. Yeah. I'm regular. Do you have kids? I do have a nine-year-old boy. Yeah? Yeah. What do you want to do uh, currently? 
he's he likes comedy. He does he does improv. No way. Yeah. So early. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's all right. Time to kill myself. <laughs> we'll wait. Just my meter. It's um, the old one. Oh right. Yeah. Um, yeah, he does a little bit of improv. He plays basketball and tennis and yeah. Uh, what else does he like? Fortnite. All that. Everybody, all the kids shit. are obsessed That's with like, this thing, huh? Yeah, and like terrible music. Actually, he's got. So I. Does he listen I like, to this? I feed him. Uh, he loves the show. What's his name? Justin. Oh, cute. What's up, Justin? Um, we'll send that to him. Yeah. Hey, Justin. What's up? Stop playing Fortnite. Go write some jokes. <laughs> He loves the show and he loves hearing me talk about him. Well, you just said he likes shitty music, so I'm sorry about your dad saying that. Um, what does he like? Well, no, so I've gotten him into a bunch of music that, oh, good. that is uh, is all right. Although he's really into like pretty ratchet hip hop. Um, I mean, I, that's another generational thing. Like, well, he doesn't even really understand the lyrics. Who do, does anybody? <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Like, taki taki, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a chip? Yeah. Um, uh, but no, I don't know. He starts playing me like new stuff. I'm like, turn that off. Sean Mendez or some nonsense like that. I like that you call Sean Mendez nonsense. Like, oh, that kid, so much talent, nonsense. I don't even know who that is, other than my son. He plays. Him. He's a great. He's a great musician. I'm sure he's a yeah awesome guy. He's just really sexy. I just don't like that kind of. <laughs> yeah, my like dad. My, I'm like very grateful that my dad. You know, first my first concert was like Aerosmith, and nice. you know, I was really into like Rolling Stones, like all the kind of classic. Yeah. And I think that's kind of why I got into stand-up. My dad was a really big fan of Cheech and Chong. Love Cheech and Chong. Kind of like, you know, Andrew Dice Clay. And yeah. um, like just really like kind of weird, absurd, kind of dirty. And I think that's always been kind of my humor. Yeah. I think that's where it started. That's SNL, funny. he was really into SNL. And um, I never wanted it myself, but then I had my own experiences with it that yeah. kind of ruined it for me. SNL? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting, like as a kid, you have this like kind of dream about oh, yeah, this, sure. what it is, and then you kind of live in it, and you're like, wow, what a difference. And like, did you go audition? No, but I, my ex wrote on the show. Oh, really? And so, and a lot of my friends are on it currently, yeah. and you know, it's a difficult job. It's I'm a sure. hard job. I'm sure. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say no. They're like, <laughs> right? Can you do some impressions? I'd be like, <laughs> do you do impressions? I do some voices. I do. I really like doing Australian accents, and you know, I'll go in and out. Okay. But I wouldn't be like, okay, next, this next impression. Right. I kind of I get uncomfortable when people do impressions and then I don't know what they're doing. And I'm like, ha, 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 what is that? Who is that? That's awesome. So you were talking about the difficulty of like balancing comedy and acting. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, uh, but you've been on a lot of shows. I've been, I've, I mean, I would uh, like to be on more. I would like okay. to be more, but I I feel like I I'm proud of my yeah my IMDb yeah I feel like I've got I've gotten to get my foot wet. Is there a show? Was that like a thing? What? Yeah. Oh, you like your, your toe, toe but I just okay. said foot because I wanted to just be more creative. Got it. No, get your feet wet. That's a that's a thing. Yeah. Um. What was my oh? Is there a show that's like kind of changed the game for you? That's made. Man, I mean, I did one. I was a series regular on a show called Manhattan Love Story. It was like okay. an ABC rom-com. And just having that experience of like being on a sitcom, I had to move to New York. Yeah. I made a lot of money. I met a lot of really great people. I got to do all like the publicity for it. That was so cool. I mean, we shot on Times Square. Oh, cool. As like our thing was on, you know, playing. And nice. that was just a crazy experience. And it, I mentally maybe was not ready for it. Because it was just such a, it just happened so quickly, and I just was like very unsure of all the choices I made, yeah. and and then I would watch the episode and feel horrible about it. And now I watch it and I go, oh, it's like great, you know. Yeah. Um, but then I just did a show called Future Man okay. on Hulu. It's Seth Rogen's oh, yeah, like yeah, sci-fi, yeah. and um, the four people that were like my sister wives and husbands, I was just at her wedding this last weekend. So that was like nice. I met some really solid people on that show, and. Yeah. That was one of the first ones where it was really character. Like, mm. you probably wouldn't recognize me if you watched it. Wow. You know, so that was cool to, like, kind of be really outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. But most of the time, I'm, like, sort of, like, a Jewy, rich, like, the status is similar. Uh-huh. So it's cool to play different things like that. Yeah. But I would love to do something really dirty and, like, like dark and, you know. Like what? Would... Like a transparent. Mm. That's, like, one of my favorite shows. I'm, like, 
Jill Soller just started following me on Instagram and I was like, ah, do I follow her right back? And they're like, wait, Jay, just wait, just wait. Um, such a fan. Really? Um, That's the thing? You have to like wait? I, well, I wanted to, to do it right away back. just to show her that I'm such a fan. And they're like, Jade, wait, don't be thirsty. I'm like, I hate that fucking term. <laughs> I, uh, okay. Because I feel like I'm hungry, you know, and <laughs> thirsty doesn't explain <laughs> what I'm going through. But yeah, I would love to do more. I mean, the acting stuff is so frustrating because I'm literally auditioning every single day, right. multiple times a day. <coughs> so what, yeah. how does it work when you get a show? Yeah. Future Man or, <coughs> or um, what was the show? Lady Manhattan like. Love Story. Oh, Lady Like. Yeah, Lady Like was offered to me. Yeah. So when you get an offer, it's just a straight offer. It's the right. best. You're like basking in it. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm wondering is like, so Manhattan Love Story. So then yeah. you start getting offers. Like, is there a is there a moment or have you seen a moment yet where like things start getting easier? No, <laughs> it's sort of like for a while it was, you know, I mean the non-union kind of circle, you, the, the, the ponds get a little bit bigger as you, right. you know, become a bigger fish and it's sort of sure. like easy in the beginning cause you're kind of the big fish and you're like, there's only so many non-union jobs and you kind of start to rule that universe. Mm -hmm. And then as you kind of go up, it gets more, you know, I'm in an area where celebrities are competing for the right. same jobs. Like, like last uh, three years ago, I tested against Jane Lynch. It's like, we know Jane Lynch is going to get it. You same know, it's type. just same type, yeah. you know, just like funny lesbian types. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's getting, it's, it's, I, I'm at that point where I, f well, I feel, I don't know if this is delusional, but I feel like I'm just th that one thing away yeah. where everything will kind of come together. Yeah. Cause I feel like I have all the parts, but I'm sort of needing that glue. How many actors, comics, writers, could we find in LA that think they're that one thing away? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I know that I have a lot of friends that are not auditioning even at all during mm. this pilot season. I know yeah. that I have a lot of talented friends who have no credits. I know there's a lot of people that are just actors don't have comedy. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I think I'm just betting on myself. I feel like I put in the work and I really do feel like I'm that one exposure thing away. Like I, I have the hour, but you know, I just don't have the fan base. I just, um, not yet. Yeah. What do you, so how much, how much do you think about that, right? Meaning, does having a bigger Instagram following get you gigs? Well, I hate does it that get part you of it, roles? Kinda. I think it does help with exposure and kind of yeah. keeping you, like, you know, relevant before you even become relevant. Sure. Um, and Maybe you know, should do like makeup tips. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing no right. makeup right now. I'm wearing just a little bit of brush right. and very natural. mascara things. Um, I do a lot of like weed sponsorship things. I kind of, live Maybe? in that branding world but so like what's a like wanna, I, I really I plug one of your sponsors I love can... Lowell Farms you guys for real. Lowell Farms yeah they're okay. um they have like just incredible they're the, their company is incredible they yeah. work with local people and yeah um I just really love their product actually and, I think I know their CMO oh really yeah, yeah. I, I'm like such a believer in in their product and I just think their packaging is beautiful and it's so do you do stuff with them like yeah you... so I'll do stuff with them they'll sponsor yeah. my shows um nice. I'm planning a little weed tour in May with Abdullah Saeed and DJ Doug Pound. Cool. We're gonna do like Sacramento, San Diego. So look out for that, definitely. But I think Lowell's gonna be sponsoring us. Nice. Amongst other weed companies. But I hate mm -hmm. that, like, I hate the whole like, how many Instagram followers do you have? And it also, but I also feed into it. So, you know, like yeah. you have to kind of play the game, but no, you don't have to love to. it. It's hard not to, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I have friends that are like not, they don't. They don't care. They don't, they don't, they I have don't a couple do friends of who don't even have Instagram and I'm like, what do you do all day? What do you refresh all day? <laughs> Your bank account? What is it? What do you do? <laughs> Stocks. Yeah. I'm like, you read books? What? Uh, it's interesting. It's become such a part of, I mean, it crashed a couple of days ago and I'm not going to oh, lie. Oh, yeah, yeah. I noticed. Oh, for sure. I was like, I why, is it, noticed. why isn't anything posted? It was just so, Yeah. it's mostly that technical, technological, like, frustration sure. like why is this working yeah but I, f I do feel I do feel like something's close something's close I didn't mean to say it wasn't I was just... no not at all it's an interesting question to ask because I I do wonder how other people feel because well, overnight I, it could change you I know? think it's more that it's it's really hard to see when you're in it yeah do you know what I mean yeah. like I've felt that as you know I've had a company for 20 years and and I sort of never really know like if we're headed if we're headed for a good year or a bad year, like, yeah, you know what I mean? 
could change so quickly. That's kind of the business too, you know. Like, yeah, you never know. Like even Lady, like I, I mean, when they, you know, I just finished doing Girl Code, mm -hmm. and Manhattan Love Story had just gotten canceled. It was really public cancellation. I mean, we got way more marketing on that <laughs> than oh, really? the show being on yeah. the air, and it was devastating. Like it, it really emotionally, it was really difficult. And my boyfriend at the time had just started SNL, mm. so it was just like a whirlwind. And yeah. I should have come back to LA and kind of use that momentum, but I right. stayed in New York and, and then like, they, when they offered me Lady, like, we were, none of us thought it would go. We were like, a, right? an all girl prank show? We're like, this yeah. is never gonna get picked up. And at the time it was maybe the 17th pilot I had done for MTV. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then and that went and, you know, it wasn't like a huge success, but it was definitely. It's funny you say all girl prank show. I'm like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. What, right, like, but at the what? time, you know. That's, yeah. For me, it was just like, yeah, it would be fun to do. Right. I didn't doubt it, you know. I'm yeah. about to do a pilot for E, and that's another thing. It's like, yeah, fun to do, but there's no, I don't have that emotional, like, this has to go. Sure. Or else I'm not going to make it. Like, right. You know. But it's hard to kind of take the time and make your own art when you're constantly auditioning. That's been difficult for me. Yeah. I just want to write a show about my parents' divorce, and then <laughs> they're like, but you have to have 16 bars of a song ready for tomorrow. Okay. God damn it. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Crazy. But check in with me at the end of pilot season and see how stable I am then. I'll be Tanner because Mexico, but. What do you do? I know you're talking about going away to Mexico. Yeah. What do you do to kind of stay centered or find your sanity? I'm a big yoga whatever? person. Yeah. I love hot. I love Bikram. Mm -hmm. Not the guy. He's just like a, another gross He's pedophile like dude. Like yeah. A, a diaper, right? What? No, it's like the. Like the way those yoga dudes with the loincloth or whatever the hell that is. I was like, does he shit his pants all the time and I don't know about it? That's part of Bikram. You're supposed to shit your pants. Oh, I'm heat. not doing it right. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I really love like that. Like getting Yeah, exercise is very, very needed for me. Yeah. Like I told you, my mind's constant. So yeah. if I don't exude energy, I get yoga, depressed. Yoga, what else? Uh, yoga is a big thing. I love hiking when it gets like warm. Yeah. I love um, shitty TV. I'm really into the whole Real Housewives series. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It kind of caught me off guard. And then my friend produced The Bachelor this last season, so I watched it for the first time. Amazing. Fascinating. Fascinating. Is it? I mean, it really, it, it, it's a bizarro thing. I had never gotten into it, and I did, never understood I why people were into it. But, but these people But I don't are, get why anybody would watch it. I, d I didn't understand until I watched it. Is that your kid? He's cute. That's it. He's very cute. Yeah, he's alright. <laughs> Justin, I'm really sorry about your dad. <laughs> no, he's. What about you? What's your thing? Do you exercise? Every day. Yeah. yeah. Are yoga, you a gym guy? Yoga, gym, yeah. cycling, tennis. Have you been to that the sweat garage over here? No. Oh, it's so difficult. Is it? Yeah. It's like a. a, a it's like you're half on the that? treadmill and then you're half. Oh yeah, I don't like that. So. Me, I don't like like working out like that. that I don't kind really of like out. working out with other people. Oh, see, I love the energy so, like, of a maybe group. Maybe a friend, like, will do that. I like class. Yeah. I like a class setting. Like, I love in, a Zumba. I'm not into that. Love a Zumba class. Love a dance class. I'll do yoga class sometimes. Mostly I do yoga at home, but yeah. But oh, I'll you do take your own classes. flow, huh? Yeah, because I've been I've been doing yoga for like 25 years. Yeah. So I just now I kind of have my thing in yeah. the morning. Yeah, I get it. I love um, all yoga except I don't like Kundalini. Oh, I like that too. I, I like, like it. the breath. I stuff. like to switch it up. I don't like it. I like it because I'm like, oh, this is weird. I see. But it makes like, me feel like I just like I feel very out. Of, I don't like the out of controlness of it. I used to go to Golden Bridge. Oh yeah. Which like, back you know I used to go to, yoga is weird because, like so I started doing it in the early '90s. Yeah. When all the teachers were Jewish and they'd all been to India, <laughs> and it was like this. That's a thing. Yeah, it's totally a thing. And they're like halfway up, sun salutations. <laughs> they're all, yeah, they're all like downward dog. They're totally all New York Jewish women. I love that. Who had like gone on a pilgrimage? To We're India. gonna breathe in. We're gonna hold it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Totally. I love. I love. Yeah. I like if I don't do it at least twice a week, I'm yeah. psycho. Yeah. Same. Yeah. That's cool. It's like I feel like we're at the right place at least. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like when I was in Australia for a month doing a little tour and I found a sweaty yoga place if I hadn't had that. Yeah. It rained every single day I was there. Is that right? Yeah, it was like a bizarro. I didn't know it was so rainy there. It's not, yeah. that was like, it was like, it's like, you know how oh, it's yeah. been so rainy here yeah. and it was really, 
It was difficult. I feel like I get, I do not like cold weather. Yeah, I'm I don't a plant. Either. I'm yeah. a plant. You're Brazilian. I am, yeah. You like the heat. It's like, it's interesting because we forget, you know, you know where you're from and kind of, you know, that's what your makeup is. But yeah. then when you're exposed to it again as an adult and you kind of see all the parts, you're like, oh, this, this is how it was made. My parts are all from this place. Like, I'm just like all these other people around me. Mm. And I hadn't felt that in a long time. That's funny. Yeah. See, I feel, I'm, I, feel, I feel that way when I go to Miami. Yeah. So that's is that how I know I'm Jewish. Well, you said San Francisco. No, yeah. but like, and I'm, I'm kidding, except for yeah. actually the weather in Miami yeah. is like perfect for my body, like hot and humid. Me too. I like it. Like, I like hot and humid. Too. Like, I want it to be hot at night. Oh, yeah. Nobody likes that. I'm like, I want it to be hot. I like it. I night. like just all the windows open. Me too. Yeah. Let's go. Let's run away to Miami right now. Done. Can you cover for us? <laughs> they're, still in the, they're still in the podcast, guys. I'm sorry. It's I'm been in. three days. <laughs> I'm in. Let's go. Yeah. I would love to. Actually, I think Miami is like a really good place for me to kind of find a fan base. I feel like there's a lot of Brazilian people there. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, I should try to get some shows over there. Yeah, Miami, it's, it's a weird, it's a great like old Jews and Latin America That's come perfect. together and it's like a weird. It's birdcage. It definitely is. Um, all right, I have to ask you some questions before we leave. Fine. Oh, I like this one that I just thought of. What, what kind of people annoy you? What kind of people annoy me? Oh, I really hate really whiny people. Um, and I hate people that are like not up for new things. It's people that are like stuck in their own like yeah. old rhythm. That really annoys me. And then people ha who talk really, really slow. Have you ever met a person that like blinks really slow? It's like, <laughs> no, that's weird. Yeah, those people don't want me. <laughs> I don't think that exists. So when you say not up for new things, like what's the, give me an example. I just hate when it's like we're a whole group and we're yeah. like, let's go to karaoke and somebody's like, nah, just like somebody who's not up for adventure. Oh, that yeah. kind of, a, I'm like, come on, let's go. Like yeah. people stuck in their old ways. Yeah, I wouldn't go to karaoke yeah. with you. And then Asians, I hate all Asians. So. Well, yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. It's funny, my wife's always trying to, she's, a, she like, she gave up, but she used to like plan these date nights for us yeah. and like try to get us, to, you know, out of our box and do yeah. something. I'm like, don't do that. Why? It's not fun. Why not? I mean, I like, I like doing shit. I like You're getting, an only child. getting out of the house. You're an only child. You're like, I want to do yoga alone. I don't want to do anything with anybody else. <laughs> I like, um, no, I'm pretty social. Like, I have, yeah. a, I have a big friend group. I love, the craziest thing about having a kid is like, you have to hang out with these other dads that you don't know. That is, that I don't do it. I'm yeah. just like, no. I'm I think not, about that I'm all the going. time. Because all my friends who have kids now have kind of, you know, you see them kind of going towards each other. Because yeah, they need I mean, each that other, makes you sense. know? Right. Are you going to have another kid? No. He's going to be an only kid too, huh? Yeah. Looks like that. It's too... It's too much work and too expensive. And I think about that all the time. I feel like if I had a kid, I would only have one kid. I have a dog named Cheryl, and that's enough for me now. Nice. What kind of dog is Cheryl? She's a mini pincher chihuahua. Oh, cool. She's a real chill chihuahua. It's yeah. weird. People really? don't like. Yeah, Those the only are not chill she has kind of little. I know she has a little bit of like leash aggression with other dogs sometimes, but yeah. besides that, like at home, never barks. Like very chill. Everyone's like, "What happened to her?" I'm like, "I don't." She's abused. Oh. I think, because she's just so calm, you know, yeah. for her breed. But having a dog is the best. Dog. Okay, lightning round. Go. Are you, are you ready for this? This is going to be awesome. Glasses on for this. I'm ready. Oh, we usually talk about music, and I forgot. So here's one. I'm a big music fan. Tell me a song that you know is bad, but you love it anyway. Thank You, Next by oh, Ariana that's Grande. Ariana Grande. Okay. All right, cool. What? What did you wake up thinking about this morning? Well, I woke up. I had a really nice morning. Woke up with, um, what did I wake up thinking about? Ooh, take, your, <laughs> take your glasses off for Ooh. this one. No, I woke up with, uh, um, with someone today, so that was good. Nice. Yeah, I just wrote, I woke up thinking, like, can I come before my alarm clock goes off? Oh, Yeah. I like it. Thanks. I and? hope Justin's turned off the podcast by now. Yeah, we'll bleep this out. Yeah, me. thanks. <laughs> Just boo. And uh, were you successful? That's in my question. Successful, too. yes. All right. Yeah, we did it. What's your favorite city to travel to? Uh, Austin. I love Austin. Okay. Uh, or 
Sao Paulo, of course, Brazil. But mm-hmm. Austin's like, I love paddleboarding. I'm a paddleboard nerd. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love yeah, yoga yeah. on the paddleboard. Yeah, my first time paddleboarding was in Town Lake. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah I love Ladybird. I swam in it every day, <coughs> and people were like, you're not swimming in it. I was like, no. no I... <laughs> so I'm made of garbage. Um, nice. Yeah, I really like Austin. It's a great city. Okay, so you're really into music. Do you have a yeah. favorite DJ? I'm not so much into DJs, but I really love like a singer songwriter. I like I love Janelle Monae, Lizzo right now, King Princess. I'm really into Billy. Cool. Um, oh, I love Billy. Yeah. Why is she a teenager? Um, I I really love female like. Tell me your favorite Brazilian music. Wow. Well, you know, Bossa Nova is like great, but I also love a lot of like female singers. There's a, w- a woman named Sel. Yeah, C-E-U. I love Sel. Yeah. So good. She's kind of awesome. electronic. I love. Um, Consage to Sexy. Mm. Do you know them? Um, they're kind of older now, but CSS. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I have seen them, yeah. Music is my boyfriend. Cool. I have a hidden want of really wanting to be a musician. Really? Yeah. Do it. I have some written things. I have some raps. I have some, like... Do you? I do, yeah. Do you want to do one now? Because there's hey, usually wanna... a musical segment. Oh, yeah, you want to do a beat and I'll sing it for you? No. Okay. What's, what's This was last... going to be, like, my debut, but it's kind of... <laughs> it's past... Um, if we had like no, I'm better set up, we could like play you a beat. I know you're joking. Um, the effort. You're like Paul Rudd and what <laughs> on American Summer, like, ah, oh, when he's putting the tray away, you know, like, duh. Right. Keep them coming. What's the last great book you read? Ooh. It can be Audible too. Oh, it can be Audible. Yeah. Oh, I love You're a Badass. Like it's kind of like oh, yeah. self, like you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm actually reading The Four Agreements right now, which is okay. another kind of self help y It's good. Yeah, I like it. Good book. And then uh, mindfulness, like about the growth behavior versus fixed mind. Yes, mindset. Mindset. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, so I'm just, it's I'm great. audibling that right now. I really awesome. enjoy it. I think, I mean, there's so much truth to it. Yeah. Even that's hard. You're like, but I want to feel like a failure. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I get it. Yeah. Which of the four agreements is the, is the one that really sticks with you? Ooh of a tough one i mean they all kind of resonate mm. but i think i don't know i feel like i need you need all four okay fair enough yeah you can't just pick one for people who like don't know anything about it they're like right. what are these four agreements i'm like i'll always do the dishes if you cook um <laughs> that's not one that's not one no no it's well, a great book yeah everyone should read it yeah my therapist made me read it so. oh nice yeah uh this morning i just finished fear itself which is narrated by don Cheadle. Which is it's why so I great. picked it. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. He's, I just, I mean, the, the story is great, but like his narration makes it. Yeah. It's almost like Amy Poehler's book. I started reading and I couldn't get into it. And then oh, really? her reading it yeah. totally oh, brought yeah. it to life for yeah, me. Yeah, that yeah. helps for sure. What movie have you seen the most in your life? Selena. Oh, wow. Or Wet Hot American Summer. That's my other. Like, okay. I just watch it over and over. Yeah. Yeah. And then probably Sex and the City 2. Best okay. line in the world where she goes, uh, I, I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, King of Arabia, more like King of My Labia. Yeah. Somebody wrote that, so that's great. That's uh, the tall one. That's Samantha. Samantha. Like the the sex you. one, yeah. That's right. The sexy one. Yeah. But yeah, Selena, I love that movie so much. Were you a Selena fan? I was a huge Selena fan yeah. as a kid. You know, you're Brazilian, there's not, not that many. Right. At, that t- at the time, especially women who were really powerful. And sure. Just such a sad story. Yeah. I never heard of her until she got killed. Well, okay, yeah. But now I know. She had a whole yeah. resurgence of... Sure. Tell me one decision that changed your life forever. Um, breaking up with my ex. Yeah. Getting out of the relationship that wasn't right for me. It's big. Yeah. Complete this sentence. If I don't have talent, I have blank. I don't have talent. Wow. That's a... I mean, do I have to say I don't have talent out loud? Um, I don't have talent. I have drive. That's good. That was I stole that from Henry Rollins. Yeah. And he that was his thing. It was like what he was trying to say is his his talent was not what made him successful. I think that I've always been kind of that person that wasn't necessarily good at things right away. Mm. But I I'll keep pushing it. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. I think I, I was always like that extra credit student. I try to teach my son that because he. He's, you know, I mean, I think it's, I think we all go through that developmentally is like, we want to be good at stuff. We want to like be recognized as being good at stuff. And so 
you know, there's a tendency to, to just not do things if you're not good at them, which I've certainly had in my own life. And so, yeah. so I always tell them like, Hey, at one point you couldn't even walk and look at you now, like you're walking, you know what I mean? Like what's mindset? It's that whole thing right. of like, yeah. Why do I feel like a failure when I don't do something right? Even though I, when, you're not supposed to do anything right, right away. Yeah. You know, exactly. But we don't, we have to remind yeah. ourselves of that. Well, it's ego too. It's like wanting sure. to feel better than people when that's kind of a fake reality. Yeah, you know, so. it's like, why do you have to be better than anybody to feel good at anything? Right. Um, so I'm kind of just trying to train my mind of like, hey, yeah, maybe you don't have that show or you're not, you haven't done, you know, because there's a part of me that's also like, I'm in my 30s now. I wish I was on TV when my butt had more elasticity, you know, but. Do squats. Like, yeah. It's like you can always make, you can always work on whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So if I worked for you, I know I met you through your uh, managers, I think. Yeah. Um, so if I worked for you, what's something I would hear you say over and over? Oh, man. Um, that audition went really well and then not getting it. I think it went really great. Or like, I think uh, I do get you, nervous. Do you, walk out, do you walk out like, nailed it? Yeah. yeah. I, my, my only thing for auditions is like, if I walk out not embarrassed, yeah. it's a win. But this last week, I was feeling very emotional about Brody and they yeah. were all like embarrassing. Yeah. That feeling in your gut when you remember it and you're like, ah. Oh. Do you ever catch yourself like, like, do you ever say, you know, I should, like, I'm not in the right headspace. I shouldn't go on this audition. I wish that I had stopped myself this yeah. week from going in, yeah. yeah. Because I just wasn't, it's like, I just couldn't, the words just weren't coming out. You know, sometimes things just click energetically yeah. and you can kind of feel it in your body when you book something. Sure. Like, I, I, I went in for, like, I just did a progressive commercial. and Nice. To me, I think it's like the Oscars Are you going to be in a new flow? Oh, no. Stephanie will not be stepping down anytime soon from that job. She's no, sure. amazing. Um, but, yeah, it was like the second I walked into the callback, I was like, this is mine. Yeah. You kind of have that, like, feel. Yeah. But you never know also at the same time. Did is... you book it or you don't know? I did. You did? I booked it. I shot oh, awesome. it already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. That's great. That's cool. Yeah, she's very talented. And they, the crew is like, they've been doing it for so long, they're mm -hmm. in rhythm. It's kind of impressive. Nice. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, who would you be most excited to learn appreciates your work? Well, I mean, the fact that Kevin Nealon and Bill Bird yeah. think I'm funny is everything to me. But when I was working on this clean set, Kevin told Steve Martin my set, and he really nice. loved this one joke. So that oh, cool. meant a lot to me. What was the joke? Um, I don't use it anymore, but it's basically about, um, you know, looking into the, my therapist says, whenever you feel bad about yourself, you look into the mirror and you say something positive. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, you piece of shit. No, um, but every once in a while there's no mirror. Yeah. And that's when I find my reflection in a toilet bowl. <laughs> and Steve loved that part. That's and he great. goes, and he said, you should say it's, there's pee in the toilet bowl just to make it more. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I look at the toilet bowl and I go like, wow, you've never been so close to a toilet without somebody holding your hair back. <laughs> you did it. It's just like a really stupid, um, good. but it would mean a lot like if Amy Poehler, um, mm. Sarah Silverman, I've been on a show with her and I like did really bad. And then I was like, oh my God, I did so bad in front of you. She's like, I wasn't listening. Like, Great. Um, That's awesome. I mean, hopefully somebody that can give me a job. That would, be, that would sure. mean a lot to me. Of course. I mean, there's so many people. Jill Solway. I mean, uh, so many people. I guess that's why we feel like we want to make it because it's like we want these people that we look up to to sort of validate us. Yeah. You know, I want to make people that I, that I look up to laugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. I just really hope that you think I'm funny. And Justin. He, Justin's not going to get your comedy, nor is he going to hear it for a really long time. Look, I'll listen I'm to a, I'll make a, a bunch dad. of Fortnite jokes. It'll hit with He tries to tell jokes. And it's funny, kids, like, they, like, they're not. You need a certain kind of understanding of the world. Yeah. And like, so we watch a lot of movies together, and he's really into comedy. Um, and he'll often, like, tell me, like, those. There'll be a joke and then he'll be like, oh, because he'll tell me, he'll explain the joke to me. Yeah. And like more than half the time he's wrong right. about like why. Why it's funny. It's funny. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I think you just have to learn. But comedy you know, is so subjective to like what, what is a good joke? Well, yeah. I mean, it's funny to him. You know? That's all that matters. Right. But it's not like, the he, but he, he'll misunderstand the meaning. He doesn't right? get the like Which, seven punch. Yeah. Well, A, because he's still learning the language 
he says a lot of words he just doesn't know and but yeah context right it's a and it's concept a, like that's sure. not really a thing we get there's a kid that does stand up there was this kid billy the kid when he was like 14. oh yeah and it was so interesting watching him because yeah, he like would go so by the book of like sets of threes right. and sure. like set a punchline kind of a thing which is also something that i really stay away from i really yeah i'm not a great writer I don't want to say that out loud for the university here, but I struggle. The writing part for me is difficult. I enjoy more the performance part of it. Yeah, but I think you're funny. And I think, you know, the truth is, like, n none of that matters. Mm -hmm. Like, people laugh because you connect with something inside of them. Yeah. And, like, it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's written right. according to some rules or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and it's I'd rather make a niche group of people laugh than America. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, fuck America. Yeah, like I'm not going to be the like, next like redneck comic, you know? It's not going to happen. But is that still happening? I'm, I'm all sure those it guys is. are. Yeah, they're I'm crushing. Sure What's yeah. his name? Um, Larry the Cable Guy. Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. I mean, he's like, I think Brian Regan's like the high, one of the highest grossing oh, really? of all time. Yeah. Sebastian is another one who I worship. So good. Oh, yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Like, that sound is him to me. Do you play colleges? I do, yeah. Yeah. They're tough. And, like, can you do the dirty stuff? Oh, there? yeah. Oh, my God. Really? Beyond. Yeah. Really? I even go dirtier because really? it's like, they're so, like, oh, my God. Like, you know. Yeah, I mean, you would think. Like, yeah. But I've only heard, like, how, like, politically correct everything is and yeah you know you do get in trouble there's some things you can't do and some colleges are really specific they ask you not to ahead of time yeah, yeah. but usually i'm like who has weed you know like right. i'll i'll kind of push the envelope yeah. a little bit i mean also they're in college you know and yeah but it, it is funny because i owe money to my college still and then i'll go and make all this college money and i'm like i'm just putting you guys in debt <laughs> it's the circle of life do you play your college I've never played Emerson. They've asked me to come speak and then didn't want to pay me. I was like, but I owe you guys money. Can't you just like <laughs> erase just some it, of my take, loans? Knock yeah. it off your bill. Um, they have a stand-up major now at Emerson, which I wow. think is kind of embarrassing. Yeah, that would, yeah. That would not. Yeah. I just think cool. it's such a like life thing that you have to sort of reach out on your own. It can't be given to you in that sense. I also think like if you major in stand-up and you don't make it, like that's kind of, that's embarrassing. Well, it's, well, a couple of the people who are really heavy into stand-up at Emerson are now very powerful agents. Right. A couple of ICM guys. Yeah. Um, and so they got to see that, that part of it and the struggle of it and the kind sure. of the rhythm of the lifestyle. And so I think it's important to do that before yeah. you become an agent or a manager. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Which, by the way, I love mine, so I'm glad you connected with them. Of course. Yeah, yeah they've been great. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, so thank you for having me. I just noticed this little flare. That's Camo. great. Uh, Where I, are your ankles? I can't... I, yeah, I usually end up with camo on most days. Yeah, it's I like a fun sock. It's a habit. Us together, we're just like a jungle. Oh, nice. I think this, what is this, like a zebra or is this more of a... No, those are like paw prints. No, it's like supposed to be like a, the, like an animal oh, print. Oh, it's like leopard. Yeah, leopard. Yeah. Like if Zebras have stripes. Are. This fucking guy thinks he knows everything. It's an educational show. It's crazy. <laughs> Today we're learning about animals. <laughs> Jade, she's never seen a zebra. She doesn't know what it is. But she's cool otherwise. Yeah. That's our headline. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. It's fun talking to you. Yeah, nice talking to you. Um, how does everyone find you online? Uh, at the Jade Movie. Nice. Is my social media. And then I also have a website, my name. Everything's on there. And then if they're watching, please watch Future Man. It's on Hulu right now. You can see it the whole second season. We're in. And the first season. And I'm on Those Who Can't on Monday. My episode comes out. What's that? It's a show on True TV about these three teachers who are like, pieces of shit it's oh, awesome cool. those who can't teach yeah and there are these three guys from um colorado they're like the they're all stand-ups mm. really really solid really cool good. yeah we'll be watching yeah nice will you come back of course but you have to have somebody to beatbox for me next time done so that was jade Catapreta on rebel radio i hope you enjoyed it i know i did uh make sure you hit us with a review give us those little five stars on itunes you can leave us a comment on uh, Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Um, our, we're everywhere you look, we're at Rebel Radio Net. And most importantly, come back next week for more Rebel Radio. Peace.